After that fight, you decided to join the Marine Corps Reserve. I always wanted them to. Do, I always wanted to be a Marine. I remember in nineteen. I was probably seventy six. I seen John Wayne on TV. He was giving the the commands to the troops when I. They were so yes, yeah, so I, so I just fell in love with it. I just always wanted to be a Marine. So at twenty and twenty eight, I said, "Well, what am I gonna do for the rest of my life?" Let me go try the Marine Corps because that's what I really wanted to be. And that's why I went into the Marine Corps at, at that time. Right. But then three days into training, you actually end up quitting. Three weeks. Three weeks. Oh, well, sorry. Three weeks. And the thing, the thing was that I didn't, re I didn't realize that they would be in your face all the time, spitting on you, and no disrespect but swarming their breath, smelling like doodle, and he's... Well, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> so eventually I just thought, well, I'm going to go home before I wind up in the break. And I thought that was the smart, the smart thing to do, opposed to acting crazy and being locked up. Mm. So okay. I just came home. So then Holyfield ended up fighting Tyson in 97. And, you know, you're familiar with Holyfield. You've been in the ring with him three times. That fight started off, and... You could tell that Holyfield was winning, and then out of nowhere, Tyson ended up biting his ear off. Right. When you saw that fight, what did you think? Man, I said, what is this world coming to? Because I had never seen anything like that before nor since. And uh, the two guys that were in the ring, I knew them personally. So I, I, I was shocked. But I really felt bad for Holyfield because he is such a great guy. And they had to have them when it was terrible. Yeah, no, that, that was ridiculous. Uh, I mean, you've had some crazy, crazy times in the ring, but I think that probably takes the cake. I would say so. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So by this time, right around 97, 98, uh, you were married. You had five kids. You know, then, I got, you know how I got five kids? How's that? Stoking. <laughs> <laughs> well, at one point, you and you and your wife got separated. Uh huh. And I guess you were living in your mother's basement. Right. Well, then you and your brother decided that you're going to go and, and get your family back. Right. Tell me what was leading up to this whole situation. Well, I just wanted to show her, how, you know, how much I loved her and. and I really wanted to be, I wanted my family. It wasn't, it wasn't my intention to really hurt nobody. But my brother had nothing to do with it. He just was riding to keep me company. Um, so, you know, things happen, you know. Um, I mean, it was just a crazy situation. I'm sorry for it. And I just wanted to be with my kids. I love my kids so much. I never had a father. So I wanted to do things with my kids that I wanted done with me. And it was a joy for me to wake up in the morning and take them to school. We would stop at the store and they can get whatever they want. You can see how happy they was with the stuff they got. Then I would take them to school, drop them off, pick them up, and do the same thing on the way back home. So, I mean, that was something I love to do for my kids. And they were just, they were just taken away. But at the end of the day, this is the first time I'm ever talking about this. I just love my kids. I wanted to be with them. And I went about it the wrong way, but I'm, I'm sorry for that. But I just really wanted to be with my kids. Well, I mean, according to reports, you, you had a buck knife, pepper spray, a flashlight, and duct tape. You drove five hours uh, to Charlotte to see your wife. And according to reports, you kidnapped your wife and the five kids. Well, how can you kidnap your wife and your kids? That I never heard that before. Yeah. If you're well, married to this person, how can you kid? I know I went about it the wrong way, and I'm sorry for that. But I, I just love my kids. I, listen, I got twelve brothers and sisters, thirteen of us, and I never had to be by myself until that took place. And I I didn't like that feeling, so I went down. I went I went to go get them. Well, at one point, they say that you stabbed your wife in the chest. That wasn't happening. I 
You know how, man, I'm 6'5", 300 pounds. If I wore the stab rose, she wouldn't be here talking today. So it yeah. would, I was showing, I was showing her the blame. And as, for, as my luck would have, we hit a bum. She got a little peck. And if I stab you, you, you ain't gonna get a little peck. And that's why the judge threw it out. The judge said, listen, look how big Mr. Ball is. He meant to, he really meant to stab you. Come on. So he threw that out. Right. And at one point, I guess you guys stopped at a, at a restaurant and she ended up calling uh, her Okay, now here's the deal. I'm, I'm going to show you what happened. We had agreed to get back together, or whatever the case may be. She said, let me hold the phone. And she said, well, let's stop get the kids something to eat. So we stopped, get the kids something to eat. And then um, cause I think when we were in Virginia when we stopped, I yeah. picked up a door in North Carolina. And she came out the bathroom and she said, well, I changed my mind, I don't want to go. And the police came, they escorted her out, and they went, she went her way and I went my way. Two months later, three months later, I get a call from the state of North Carolina to me I had to go to court because I had a case. So I'm, I don't know what happened. I guess Rock Newman spoke to her, my manager and said, okay, well, we need to let him, we, we need, he need to go to jail. And if he goes to jail for a long period of time, we can get his money from HBO. So that's all that was. It was all about the Benjamin. Okay. Well, uh, you end up getting indicted on uh, interstate domestic violence. Mm -hmm. You pled guilty. Um, you know, you had to remain at your house for a while. You had, you had an ankle bracelet at one point. Right. No, I actually uh, went to prison. I, I spent a year yeah. and a half in prison. I mean, Right, no, I, I, I was getting to that, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the attorney, the United States attorney said that you've taken responsibility for your actions and the fact that you pled guilty means that you started to do that and, you know, but you also have to be punished for what you did. Um, you got 18 months and I guess it was supposed to be 30 days, but then there was an appeal that got you back to 17 months. Um, um, you kind of love me. So you say it was what again? Well, I guess originally you got sentenced to 18 months and you, your, your legal team managed to cut that to only 30 days, but then I guess they appealed and then you end up getting 17 months. Well, I agree with you. I, I yeah. did 17 months, right. Was that the first time you were in prison? The only, the first and the only, only time. time. First and only time. That's 21 years ago. I ain't been in jail since. How did it feel for Riddick Bowe Heavyweight champion of the world. Two times. To suddenly, two times. Two heavyweight times. champion of the world. To suddenly be in a dirty little cage surrounded by criminals. Well, the thing was, I realized I did something wrong and I knew that I would never do it again. That is not where I wanted. That's, that's not where I should be, but I, I guess they felt like I did something wrong, so that's what I had to do. I felt like, well, what I'm gonna do, they don't think I'm gonna land on my, 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 my feet when I get out of here, so I had to show them otherwise. How are you treated in prison by the by the guards and the other inmates? Just like everybody else. Yeah. I mean, I had to get up, uh, I had to do everything. If, if four people had to do something, I had to do just what they were doing. I had to take a shower when they said take a shower. Go to sleep, they say go to sleep. Either they made for me and the whole nine yards, you know. Did anyone ever try to test you? Did one of the other inmates try to fight you? I mean, I know it'd be suicide, but still. Absolutely, you know, so no. Absolutely not. <laughs> People left you alone, like, okay. And the thing with, the thing is, you see, if I would have, somebody would have approached me, I would have got more time because I'm going to hurt you in there because I don't want you to hurt me. I'm gonna do something big with you, so. Yeah. And I guess they probably felt the same way, but they, they never gave me no trouble. 